Alder Person Bourne? Here. Here. Alder Person Donahue? Here. Here. Alder Person Feldy? Here. Here. Alder Person Ackley? Here. Alder Person Phillips? Alder Person Decker? Here. Alder Person Sorensen? Here. Alder Person Savaglio? Present. Alder Person Felicki Paneski? Here. Alder Person Mitchell? Here. Alder Person Phillips? There are nine present. Thank you very much. Next, I'd ask you to all join, uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk, is there anyone for public forum? There's no one on public forum. Thank you. Then we'll move on to hearings. Item 2.1 is hearing number 3 of 2021 pursuant to chapter 65.90 of the laws of Wisconsin and noticed and published in the, for the annual budget hearing will be held this evening to give any taxpayer or resident of the governmental unit the opportunity to be heard on the proposed 2021 budget. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Please step forward to the, pipe, the microphone. And your name and address, please. Dulcie Johnson, 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. <clears throat> Can I begin? Yeah. Please. Okay. <laughs> First, I would like to thank the city administrator and fire chief for including the salary and benefits of assistant chief Butler in the 280 ambulance budget for 2021. He was hired to manage the ambulance service, but the department has never included any administrative costs in the expenses of the service until now. Secondly, I think the city is over tiffed. Even though the equalized value of existing TIFs and TIDs is less than what is permitted for the city. When I got my tax bill last year, I thought it might be the same or slightly yet less given all the construction in the city. But alas, it was higher. Last year's tax levy was an increase of 3.6%. This year's tax levy is set to increase by 3.9%. Yes, I know City Hall was remodeled. It was the right decision and is a credit to the city. Meanwhile, county taxes have been lowered for five consecutive years in spite of having built that huge warehouse for 20 to 25 million dollars, and the county budget for 2021 is eight million dollars less than last year. County taxes will be 26 cents less per thousand evaluation. The city is projecting a 15 percent increase per thousand evaluation. I am concerned when an arm of the city, specifically the library, presents an unbalanced budget of more than $90,000 after a cut of almost $200,000 to their budget and not being able to cover the cost of their employees' health insurance. Additionally, the library staff was cut by one. I don't think any other department cut any employees, including the senior center, which is not even operational. I believe Chad said that new construction was $89 million in 2020, but the taxpayers will not receive the benefit of that added valuation on their tax bills. The audit of the city's TIF districts for 2019 shows that expenditures exceeded revenues by almost $2 million. Since the taxes in a TIF or TID go to pay off the debt of that entity, instead of being put in the general fund, that means that the taxpayers are paying for the development of the Oscar complex, the new industrial park, the A Street projects, etc., resulting in higher taxes for everyone. 
Granted, many of these developments would not happen without the incentive, such as the old tannery project. But as Chad noted in his presentation to the council in June, TIDs may be used in areas where development would have occurred anyway. So why establish a TIF or a TID? Why not let the developer pay for the development and let the tax revenues flow into the general fund to lower property taxes? I recently met a new resident of our community who has relocated from Washington, D.C., and was amazed at how much higher property taxes are in, Wisconsin, in Sheboygan than D.C. Obviously, the TIFs and TIDs are one reason. Many citizens are questioning the need for the many, additional, for the many apartment complexes that are being built. I understand that two are at only 60% of capacity. I don't know about the others. And not being a developer, I don't know if that makes the development profitable. But citizens are questioning the need for all the housing developments, especially since the taxpayers are paying for that seeming overdevelopment. The city marina, which was built approximately 25 years ago, is still in debt by 2.4 million. According to the 2019 audit, the marina's expenditures exceeded revenues by $85,000. Some of you will remember the discussions when that facility was being proposed. City Development Director Bob Peterson was determined that building only 200 slips the first year would mean having to add another 200 slips immediately because of the demand. The reality is that the 200 original slips have never been full. The usual occupancy of the marina is 60%. The 2021 budget summary, which the council reviewed at their October 19th meeting, shows a deficit in the general fund of one and a half million. The 2021 executive budget summary shows a deficit of six and a half million. The document also shows that revenues for 2021 are projected to be $3 million less than in 2020, and expenditures are slated to increase by $10 million. The maximum life of a TID is 27 years. Some of these TIDs will not expire until 2035, 38, 42, and 47, which means the taxes from those developments will not be available to the general fund for another 15 to 27 years. I hope the council will put the brakes on any further TIFs or TIDs and give the taxpayers a break. Thank you. Thank you very much for those comments. Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Is there anyone else wishing to be heard? Alder Person Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of closing the budget hearing, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to a presentation on the 2021 proposed budget by City Administrator Todd Wolf. Thank you, Council, Mayor, and Department Heads. And of course, Carrie, for supporting me through this uh, budget season. Many hours and meetings of review. We have all, um, all, of, all of us have worked very diligently together on this, on this uh, um, budget during these unprecedented times. Have faith in our community and nation, and we will preserve, pre persevere as we always do. So a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Next slide. So I wanted to talk about our, our city's mission statement, because this is what we define as what we are. The city of Sheboygan is dedicated to providing residents and business community and visitors with fiscally responsible municipal services in an effective and responsive manner to meet the needs of our diverse community. We have to remember that this is what we are. Next. What we want to also remember is in our vision, this is what we, what we desire in our future. The city of Sheboygan will be a family-oriented and prosperous community with a wide variety of housing, business, cultural, and recreational opportunities in a safe and attractive neighborhoods. I think we're doing a fantastic job on that. Next. 
Our city values, these are very important values. I'm very impressed that we have these to help us achieve our mission, vision, and strategic plan. We are focusing as a team more on these during our, our daily processes in the city. As you can see, we reconfigured them to, to, with the acronym STAIRS. In our, in our strategic plan, it's, um, it's fiscally responsible, but we've adjusted that to stewardship because they're basically the same. So what we focus on every day is service to our constituents, teamwork between our, between our multiple teams throughout the city, our accountability, making sure that we're all accountable for what we do day in and day out, our innovation, respecting each other, internal and external, and then obviously our stewardship that we, we take for granted. Next. So with, when, you, when you represent the state and city restraints, a lot of people don't realize that some of the issues besides what you see on the, on the, on the slide with our tax levy limits, expenditure restraint programs, our minimum fund balance, targeting of 25%. We've also had a loss of our aligned revenue, and that will continue to decrease over the next few years. Our loss in room tax, but not as, not as bad if you review our 2020 amended numbers in our budget review. Our county has seen an increase in third quarter they're anticipating that things are going to look good in the fourth quarter, not as bad as originally anticipated from our second quarter review. Unemployment is at 7.7% through the nation. Wisconsin's at 4.7%. 4 Sheboygan County, 37 pre-COVID. Post-COVID was 127 in May. In June, it was 8%. Are we out of the woods? No, but we're getting there. 3.4 in January, 3.2 in February of 2020, just as an example. Next. Expenditure restraint program and tax levying limits. This is truly a teeter-totter for, for me in learning this. Balancing act to stay within the limitations relative to both, both areas. <coughs> Calculations were thoroughly vetted through senior municipal advisor. Marty Halverson and myself, we, we did work with Ehlers to make sure that we were balancing our levy and our expenditure restraint to its fullest to make sure that we didn't leave anything on the table. This limits the city from spending. If we don't use the levy, we lose it. That's something that we need to remember because in 2020, we gave up levy limits. That hurts us as, as it compounds. This will and could cause future cuts next year. <coughs> With a loss in levy, we don't have fat to cut, and that's one thing we need to remember. We would have to cut present services, as well as this could affect our Moody um, rating. And please remember our mission and vision. Expen next. Expenditure restraint program allows increase of the general fund expenditures by 60% of the percentage increase of the city's net new construction and allowable <coughs> CPI. For 2021, the, the city is estimating a 3.1 allowed, increasing it in expenditures. This was recently approved and given to us this, this past week. So if you look at that, you take 2.88 net new construction, we get 60% of that, of the 2.88, that equals 1.73, plus we get 1.4% CPI, that's how it equals the, the 3.1 allowed. Please understand that you can't even exceed by a tenth in that percentage. Our, our, our expenditure restraint and levy limits are that tight. Next. So tax levy limits. So when we talk about this, we look at the state law restricts the percentage increase of the city's tax levy based on previous year's tax levy. Remember in 20, 2019, we actually lost a little bit that didn't get carried over into 2020. Net new construction, we had a lot of net new construction from 19 that was shifted into 2020, so we had a se severe increase of 2020, which affected us in 2021. Net new construction, again, is we have a lot going on, but I agree it's also in, it, it's affected by TIDs and TIFs. We did have TID closures of TID 11, which really did help us. 
And then we have TID subtractions. So having TID 11 closed, which was a help, the only changes in the, in the actual budget are wages and benefits, which are conservative. We have training and technology upgrades. As we've talked as a council, we really need to continue to improve our technologies and training. We have our CIP approved in, in June, which doesn't really affect the budget per se. We did have $800,000 in our budget for improvements. Half a million of it was uh, Geely Avenue, which is in dire straits. I would not want to put that project on hold. We have a, a few police cars. We have some lighting throughout the city as our constituents can continue to complain that they want more lighting for safer neighborhoods. We have a fire ex extractor equipment, and I'm sure we really don't want to cut back on that for our fire department and, and people in, in safety. Next. Equalized tax rate at the CPI or lower. So obviously you've heard me talk about confirmed consumer price index, CPI is 1.4. Department of, Re or DOR, confirmed that on the 23rd. Again, it takes a long time for us to get these numbers. So we're working on a budget with a lot of gray areas in the beginning. So our 1.4 CPI estimate was used in our 2021 <coughs> executive budget and it was confirmed. Next. As you can see here, our 2021 budget facts, and I'm sure you guys have reviewed those intensely. Next. Our assessed tax rate. I wanted to give a little bit of history on this, <coughs> as we tend to forget where we were, where we've been, and where we're going. So in our 2021 budget, we kind of adjusted this. So it does say in the bottom, it says tax, tax rate per budget year, just to help with some confusion. So in 2021, what we're proposing is basically a, a 1.49% or 15 cents per thousand. In 2020, it was a 13 cent per thousand. 2019 was 17 cents. 2018 was 19 cents. 2017 was 19 cents. So please understand that we are what most would look at as a flat, if not declining in 19, 20, and 20, 21, if you were to run the averages. In 18 and 19, that's when we did the city, uh, city hall and the uh, South Point Enterprise, which are both very good projects for the city. In 2020, we did leave money on the table when it came to our levy, which we don't want to, we're not planning to do that in 2021. Next. Equalized to assessed ratio. We put this together to help the, help the council to, under, to better understand where we are when, it, when you look at our equalized to assessed ratio. I think this is hopefully beneficial for you. When you look at our annualized equalized to assessed ratio, you can see that we've continued to drop over the years. Our percent gap of 100% compliance, obviously the red at the top, is increasing. So out of, we are out of compliance since 2019. Our capital improvements for reassessment was proposed in 2017 to the, to the committee. It was pushed off, and this project of reassessment was to be done in 2021, and that has not been accepted. In 2021, the state, state chose to keep the trend on equalized values. Next. Property tax levy. Again, you can see over the years, we've Try, we tend to be somewhat flat. We did provide the library with a 3% increase in the levy, adjusting um, transit dollars using CARES Act funding. Unfortunately, with CARES Act funding, we have to remember that that's short-lived, so that means that we will have to make up that adjustment in levy that we provided to the, to the library. Next. Fund balance. So as you can see, the city, city's goal is to maintain the fund balance at 25% for the next year's budgeted general fund expenditures. This is something that's given us a lot of benefit when it comes to the Moody. We're looked at as a fiscally responsible safety net with our fund balance at the level that it's at. It's consistent with Moody's credit services recommendation. And in 2020, 2021, our recommended budget fund balance is approximately 
39%. Just to bring everybody up to speed, in 2021, I do plan to review what, what we can do to use, our, to use or control our fund balance better. Example for everybody is that we used five million of the city's um, fund balance for City Hall, if we all remember that. We borrowed, six, we borrowed a portion and we've used a portion of our, our fund balance. That was back in 2018 and 2019. We've already paid that back plus increased to 39%. So we need to get our hands wrapped around that. How can we adjust that? And what options do we have as a council and a, as, a, as a city? <clears throat> Next. So here, the fund balance uncommitted. You can see we're at 15, $15,735,000. And that's our actual fund balance. And our targeted is only at $10 million. So you can see that we've got you know, in excess of upwards of $6 million. Next. 21, 2021 person, personnel changes. I just want to help everybody understand that the addition of a 1FTE program coordinator senior services, that was funded via contributions from the Friends of the Senior Activity Center. That's net neutral. It means it's not costing the city for that person. That person's been working at the senior center for several years. Transfer of 1FTE in public works, streets, and sanitation Again, that was just an adjustment within the departments. And the transfer of one FTE in the fire department staff uh, to the ambulance fund, again, that was um, basically administration. So that was net neutral. All right, next. Oh, thank you. Our 2021 recommended budget changes, RO 82, 20, and 21. I'm just wondering if anybody has any questions that uh, Director Halverson and myself can answer regarding the 2021 budget changes presented in, on uh, October 19th uh, to the committee at a whole. Otherwise, I, I have nothing further. Any questions? Uh, I've got a couple questions, uh, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, Jim, do you wanna wait till we get into the next item then? That's fine. Very good. Thank you for that presentation, Administrator Wolf. So next item is number four, items for discussion and possible action. We have four documents before us. They include RC number 167 of 2021 by the Committee of the Whole, Tuma's referred RO number 82 of 2021 by the Finance Director submitting the 2021 budget adjustments related to resolution number 103 of 2021 by Alderpersons Donahue and Sorensen establishing the 2021 budget appropriations and the 2020 tax levy for use during the calendar year. So those are, are on the agenda so that uh, if any amendments are needed, uh, those can be made tonight and adjusted. Uh, so that when we come to uh, the final approval for the budget at the uh, first meeting in November on November 2nd, we hopefully will have all the adjustments made. So with that, uh, with those items on the floor, I'll turn it over to Alderperson Boren for his comments. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I guess uh, Todd could, could address these. Uh, a week or so ago, I attended a number of Zoom conferences with the League of Municipalities annual meeting, and one of those was budgeting for 2021 and I guess beyond with the pandemic. And uh, there were three three uh, uh, municipalities that were involved in that. One was Clintonville with about 4,500 people, uh, uh, Madison. And uh, the other one escaped to me right now that had uh, a population of about 9,000 people. And all of those municipalities were either going to remain neutral uh, on, their, on their budget increase for 2021, or maybe a couple cents higher. Madison was actually going to reduce their, their tax levy by 28 cents a thousand. And I remember, I, I realize there's many differences between a city the size of Madison and Sheboygan <clears throat> with as far as their, their, their annual growth because of being a high tech city and many other things. But on the other hand, uh, Madison decided in order to lower that tax levy by 28 cents that they were gonna take a number of measures. Number one, they weren't giving their city employees any raise for 2021. 
they were reopening fire, uh, fire and police contracts to uh, hopefully have those unions uh, make some additional contributions. Uh, so I, I and and then I read in the paper, and Ms. Johnson referred to it over uh, uh, the county's uh, budget that was referenced in the uh, in the paper over the weekend, where the county is. Uh, is cutting their uh, tax levy substantially for next year, I believe 26 cents a thousand. And the amount that they're actually going to level uh, levy for next year is on a $54 million, a $51 million budget is $788,000. That's their increased levy uh, for next year on a 50, $51.4 million budget. I guess my question is, and I asked you this last week, Todd, you told me that you and Marty were working on a number of scenarios to keep our budget from having an in increase in levy for next year, or maybe a, a, two, uh, a two cent raise or a five cent raise. Can you tell the council specifically uh, when you were going over those scenarios with Marty, what were you considering if we were going to have a zero levy increase? What specifically were you talking about either cutting or not funding in 2021? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jim. Um, as you and I have discussed at length, there's a couple of things I want to point out uh, to the council in, in discussion of the, of the points that you brought up. First, I would be cautious to the council when you're going to reference a, a community of 4,500 or 9,000 um, constituents because there's, there's quite a dif difference between um, a community of that size and a city of Sheboygan of 50,000. We do have a, a little bit larger budget than that. Um, so when we also, uh, we've looked into multiple communities to see what kind of non-represented salary increases have been done. So the city of Sheboygan, my goal was 2%, which is still low when you look at the uh, cost of living. Manitowoc is at 2.07. Port Washington's at 3%. Appleton's flat. Beloit, 2%. Fond du Lac is 1.75. La Crosse, 5.5%, Wausau flat, and Madison flat. But also, since you brought up Madison, I do want to point out that they are looking at two to four days of furlough for all their non-reps, so no work, and, uh, and basically a furlough means that you're not contactable, you can't communicate, you, have, you basically have to take two to four days off where you're not working at all or checking emails or answering the phone for for the city. So when we talk about that, and then we, I'll reference the, the models that I referenced. Um, Mr. Halverson and myself ran several models of how we would look at the levy and um, ex, uh, the actual, um, uh, sorry, expenditure restraint, thank you. The expenditure restraint, the, the whole goal with the model was to make sure that we didn't leave any of our levy on the table like we did in 2020, because the problem that if you leave um, money on the table, as I call it, with, with uh, the levy, you don't get it back. So if we were to keep everything flat and not do a, the 15 cent per thousand, we would literally have to, and we can do it, we can cut into our fund balance, we can do that. But then what happens is in 2022, which I personally think is gonna be a tougher year for everybody. 2021, as we can see, is not a, um, turning out to be that bad of a year. We're getting through it. And in 2022, it's not, we're not gonna have the ability to make the changes or adjustments, as discussed with you, that we may need to do in 22. So my recommendation is that we accept the budget as stated for the benefit and the, and of the city because if we, if we actually were to cut, we would actually have to make major cuts, plus we would lose our, our Moody's rating, which we all know we don't want that because that'll be a, a cost that, that affects us in future, future growth and future borrowing. Mm -hmm. But we would not be able to make the changes in 22 respectfully because of the fact that we would have, we, because of, the, because of the, the levy limits. So that would mean cuts to service. We would have to you know, look at um, what departments would have to be cut and what services that the constituents um, would be willing to lose because of the 15 cents. I hope that answers your question, Jim. 
Well, you know, every time every time we give a 2% raise to the city employees, and believe me, I want them to be well compensated. I want to have and keep good people. But every time we're raising the, uh, giving employees a, uh, a 2% raise, that's ad adding over $550,000 to our budget. And, you know, rather than do that, maybe some year we should just put another $550,000 in uh, in program and and getting back to the Sheboygan Sheboygan County uh, Adam Payne stated in the paper over the weekend that uh, if uh, he doesn't get as much cares cares act reimbursement uh, and, and other reimbursements they have a very a very generous uh, uh, reserves to cover those losses so in other words Adam Payne is willing to use fund balance uh, for unanticipated <coughs> expenses and you know we have to realize that uh, this is not easy for our constituents. I have a fiduciary responsibility to all of my constituents, and since this COVID thing started back in March, there's another eight million people that are living in poverty. That, that compared to before before this started, uh, people in my age group, uh, we're we're getting less than a one percent increase in uh, in our social security next year, which probably isn't going to affect me personally. But I'm sure there's a lot of senior citizens that it is going to affect. Uh, so, uh, and I have I have friends that have children that are helping out their children with mortgage payments, and their children are helping out their children. So, you know, I, I realize that our unemployment rate in Sheboygan County is much better than uh, than it is in other parts of the country. If you saw the article in the in the Sheboygan Press the other night regarding our local Salvation Army. Last year, they helped a thousand kids around Christmas. They're estimating a hundred percent increase in what they're going to have to do this Chris during the Christmas season. They're estimating they're have, going to have to uh, help a couple a couple thousand more kids. Our food banks are stretched. More and more people are depending on that. So I'm very concerned with my fiduciary responsibility to my constituents that we're, we're just continuing to increase the tax levy, and it's going to be very very difficult for some, some of our constituents to get by in 2021. As a point of information, Alderperson Gorin, I'd like to also remind you that a few years back, Sheboygan County passed a sales tax. And that goal on the sales tax was to uh, pave more of our roads and they gave some of the money to the different municipalities as well. But the other thing they did is they're using some of that money for property tax relief. And they're following through in that promise. But they had a new source of revenue to do that with, not just property tax. Is there any We're other? We're using that for roads. We're using that for roads, correct? Pardon me? We're using the sales tax that we're getting, that extra... Uh, that extra sales tax we're getting from the county, that's going strictly for roads for the city. Is that correct? That's correct. It'll pay a little bit more than half of the cost of repaving uh, Geely Avenue this year. Is there any other alder person? Bo uh, Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Todd, can you just uh, translate the uh, increase in um, the tax levy on uh, that that is being proposed for a house that is worth a hundred thousand dollars on a hundred thousand dollars just one second <laughs> <laughs> I do it myself but it's truly not my skill set yeah it's like fifteen dollars <clears throat> oops sorry, I'm sorry? One second. Fat fingers. Fifteen dollars on a hundred thousand. Fifteen. Okay. It's fifteen cents per thousand. Okay. So, uh, just a couple of thoughts. Uh, one, I know it is very enticing to look at what other communities are doing and to try to analyze their thoughts. Um, Elder Bourne, I think that you showed uh, very powerfully that it is all over the board. Now, why is that? In my opinion, it's because individual communities pay people to analyze what services and 
how people are compensated, and what the financial picture of the entity is. And, we, and they do that in, in, you know, in some detail. The other thing that happens is different cities have different factual uh, issues. Some may be old cities that need to redo a lot of their property uh, or their infrastructure. There may be cities like Madison that really are blossoming because of particular tech industries and so forth. Um, the interesting part about Sheboygan County, uh, other than the fact that, that as, as the mayor has pointed out, uh, they're using, although we as a recipient of $400,000 plus or minus from the county for sales tax are required to use it for transportation, the county is apparently also using it for property tax relief. So good for them, good for us. Um, but I will note that their levy has increased a fair amount. Uh, not their tax rate, but their levy. In other words, they're bringing more money in. So I would just caution us to not take any really hard lessons overall from what Clintonville is doing or Wausau or Madison or even Manitowoc. Um, I, you know, I've looked at this in some detail and I think that the budget is reasonable under the circumstances. Uh, Alder Bourne, I think you have articulated very powerfully how poor people in this community are going to be affected by the pandemic even more than people who are not uh, low income. We have a lot of low and low income people and working families that truly, truly are going to be struggling. But if we start cutting back, if we furlough people, if we um, if we commit to a non-growth philosophy, like we're not going to do, we're not going to encourage development through tax incremental financing. We're you know we're just not going to help out that way. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. I think we can do that and we can save our constituents $15 a year or, you know, $27.5 a year, whatever. But we aren't getting at the heart of the overall economic health and energy and prosperity of the community. So at this point, I've looked at this in some detail. Uh, I know we all have. And I think that the... The proposal is modest, but bright and forward thinking and will encourage growth rather than um, that kind of shrinking that happens to communities when there's not enough property tax to repair the roads and businesses don't want to locate here. And then the schools shrink and on and on. So I know I've talked too long, <laughs> but I, I, I just feel so strongly that um, a budget is a way of thinking about the future, and it has to have a broad picture as well as the specifics, and I think this one does, and so that's why I'm going to support it as is. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Barb Feldy has a comment. Yeah, Barb had a question. Barb, please go ahead. Yes. Um, I had a conversation with, with Jim, and I've talked to Todd, and I've talked to Ryan, um, only because each person has a different perspective. And Todd, thank you for your time. Um, I appreciate you walking me through a lot of it. Um, number one, what I want to say is, um, as somebody that survived a home fire when I was in elementary school, I will always, always support the police and fire department. And I think a 2% increase is a minor amount that the city of Sheboygan will pay for protection. So number one, that isn't what I'm looking at. Um, I, I do agree with Jim, though, that you know we need to start cutting somewhere. And um, more than a year ago, I asked about you know how is COVID going to affect all of our budget and the revenue we have coming in. And um, I didn't really didn't get an answer at the time. Um, and I think I probably wouldn't get a clear answer now because there is no way to know how it's going to affect us because. We're not done with it yet. Um, I am concerned 
because as we do the surveys every, every year um, since I was elected, um, survey says roads are the most important things to our constituents. Yet we never seem to have enough money to put into them to catch up. And I'm afraid if we cut the budget, um, we're just going to see more of what we've already seen. We'll get so far behind and prices will go up and then we'll never catch up again. So um, I hear where Jim is coming from with his comments and I appreciate uh, Mary Lynn's comments, but um, I, I'm still like balanced in the middle here. Um, we can't we can't cut our employees. They've been cut for the last 12 plus plus years um, with Act 10 and less revenue to the cities. And you know we we've cut as thin as we can, and we have um, the least amount of staff um, doing the most amount of work. And I think they deserve that two percent increase. Um, and if we're going to cut, I think we need to put our heads together and find some place else to do it, but not not taking away from our employees. Thanks. Thank you for those comments, Mike. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you. Um, jotting down a lot of notes. I, I appreciate the conversation that we're having from everybody as well. Um, and, and I definitely agree with with Alderperson Feldy's comments when it comes just in terms of um, prioritizing repairing our roads. Um, is one of the biggest issues when we do the community surveys. Um, I mean, previous councils before that, most of us were on here, um, kept kicking the can down the road when it came to road repairs, infrastructure projects, and, and a lot of other different um, uh, much needed repair, repairs that our community needed. Um, and, and we all know when you kick the can down the road on major infrastructure projects like that, the cost just skyrocket um, immensely and, it, and it's much, much, much more difficult to catch up and you just keep spiraling down. And I, and I don't want us to be in that position again because previous councils have made that decision. I feel like we're finally slowly getting back in a good routine where we can get on, on ahead of our road repairs. Obviously we got a long way to go as well. Um, I do have a few questions for Administrator Wolf. Um, and I am just kind of wondering if you could address some of the comments um, um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Dulcie Johnson had brought, had brought up just in terms of just the, the, the about the $10 million difference between the total expenditures with the adopted 2020 budget as well as the proposed executive budget as well. Um, if you could just mention those issues, that would be great. Thank you. Not a problem. Um, and I'm sure Marty can jump in if I misspeak or anything like that as, since I'm new at this. But um, when, it, when we look at the, the, the balance, we have to remember that Danan um, is actually what's throwing our numbers off tremendously. The NAN is not calculated in our geo debt. So when you look at the geo debt, and that's where Moody's likes debt to go because it's easy to see, it's, it's right in front of you. The NAN, although it was on our debt, it was in a different area. So when it didn't show up, and by borrowing the money in 2020, which we are, to, uh, at, a, at a better interest rate, and we're locking it in from a NAN to a, a GEO, you're seeing us pay it out in, in 2021. So you're, you're seeing a, lar a large shift. And we had that shift back in when we did the City Hall and the um, South Point Enterprise, we saw the big, big shift of dollars of revenue and expenses. And really, we're not a negative 6.9 million or, or, or so. It's, it's actually, we're shifting, um, I believe, the $10.5 million through there. So there's actually not a negative, but more of a positive. So if, if people would review the budget in brief and look at the expenses and, and that we also, the team also updated where we are in 2020 to see how we're going to how we're going to basically fare. So as uh, Alder Feldy had questioned, how how is um, COVID going to affect us? Please understand that 2020, although second quarter was not good, um, third quarter, fourth quarter are looking much much better, and obviously that's going to really help us. And you know, from my professional opinion and from what I've heard, you know, going on with, within the uh, 
the communities and that everybody is more concerned about getting through 2021 because 2022 is really where we're going to see, um, you know, assuming that everything hopefully gets taken care of in 2021, 2022 would be a, a bigger concern to, to worry about. Does that help you? Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Is there any other discussion? I could just make one more comment, Mayor. Please go ahead, you Alder Person Barn. You want me to go ahead, Mayor? Yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, back uh, to answer the question, you know, we've, we've been neglecting roads and that type of thing over the years. I believe when I came on the council back in about 2006, the portion of our the portion of our budget that was going to towards wages and benefits was under 80 percent, probably about 70, 78 percent, somewhere in there. And gradually over the years, and this may answer some uh, the question for some older persons that are not aware of this. But I believe now our, our, our budget is probably 81% up in that area, 81% salary and benefits. So when you've only got 20 or 19 or 20% of your budget to, uh, you know, for roads and all the other things we're supposed to do, that's, that's part of the problem. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think a priority next year for all the department heads should be to find new efficiencies and way of, ways of doing things you know, for example, a good example would that be would be the Department of Public Works. My God, the staff that Public Works had 10 years ago compared to now, I think it's probably half. But they have better equipment. They're working smarter, and of course, they're getting very good direction from their from their from their department head. And I and I'm not saying other departments uh, aren't aren't looking for new efficiencies, but I think if we're going to have enough budget of our budget to to dedicate the program. I think next year, and I and and I know you're going to do this, Todd, because you're going to have more time uh, with with the next year's budget. But I think we have to redouble our efforts to find new efficiencies and better ways of doing something. That perhaps in, in in finding better ways of doing something, maybe reduce our overall census of city employees, and uh, that's done every day in the private sector. And I think that's where we have to redouble our efforts next year to try to get that percentage of our budget that goes to salary and benefits uh, under 80% again. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. One last call for any discussion. There's Anyone some, else? Mary Lynn. There's some more. Alder person Donahue. And Bert. <clears throat> yeah, and then Bert. Alder person Donahue. Mary Lynn, Roberta, would you like to go Sorry, first? I <laughs> I think Alder Felicki Paneski should probably go first because I've already chatted. <laughs> Alder Person Felicki Paneski. Thank you very much. Um, a couple of things. I, I do agree with Jim that we should look at personnel because it is a large portion of our budget. <clears throat> what I am aware of is that there is a personnel study ongoing out of uh, Finance and Personnel Committee. So we're, we're on our way to look at what kind of positions there are, what descriptions there are, and how those descriptions work. Um, and as to working more efficiently, I also am understanding that this year there will be um, a concerted effort to upgrade our internal uh, computer systems so that they are, everybody is all on one system and um, it, it will lead to, one, better efficiencies, and two, also better data. Um, the other thing that I had observed earlier is um, having come out of a finance background, it, it is really, it, one of my deals is we really should not jeopardize our bond rating that is a significant um, advantage to our city. Uh, uh, it gives us lower interest rates. It makes us a good bet for anyone who wants to buy our debt. So some of our reserves, I looked at the reserves and thought, maybe we don't need so many reserves. Um, this year I said, yeah, we probably need those reserves because I too agree that we're gonna we're gonna feel more 
fiscal impact in the year 2022 than we probably are in 2021. And again, we we need some of those fund balances and, and we need to protect our bond rating. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Older person Donahue. Uh, just very briefly, um, I think uh, Todd, if, if, if you and Marty do some um, projections for 2022 and uh, just set out in writing what you think some of the bigger challenges are going to be uh, for the alders, I think that will be helpful. And then second, I couldn't agree with Alder Bourne more that we need to continue to look for efficiencies um, and better ways of doing business. And I just want my hats off to all of our department heads who do that all the time. So I've been on the council for eight years and the really quite remarkable restructuring of most of the departments to save money and to make services more efficient has been very heartwarming. Um, the library alone has nearly cut its staff in half. And of course there are service reductions and so forth, but nonetheless, you know, that kind of innovation and interest in doing more with less, I think has been a key facet or a key piece of, of what our department heads and our employees do. So Jim, I think, um, I think your point is well taken, but thankfully we're in very good shape that way. And it's not as if this is something that would just start. Um, we'll continue to do that and, and that will all be good. So, um, but I, I, I am interested in, in, in just thoughts on, on 2022, not for tonight, but you know, uh, as we go on. All right. Thank you for those comments. Uh, Administrator Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Council, I just want to uh, kind of reiterate a couple of things. We, tonight we've uh, talked about the budget, we've talked about you know, potential cuts, things like that, wages. Please understand that my predecessor had accelerator rates of 3% and 4% for employees in addition to the cost of living. So respectfully, if you had a 2% cost of living, then they, that person could qualify for an additional 3% or additional 4%. Please also understand that we struggle as a city hiring new recruits, hiring new people for our, our community, and that's difficult. So as you've heard me say in the past, and I've only been, I've only been in this position since you know, July 7th, my background is process improvement. My, my, my background is change management. Please have faith in the fact that we are turning over every stone within the city and the departments. And the, the department heads are doing a fantastic job helping to lift those heavy rocks to find any ways to improve things. That is why I came to the council and told you guys that we need to update our technology. We're also updating our, our training. So there's things that I'm bringing to you guys for the betterment of the future. And if we want to cut that, and do what we've done in the past and not take care of the things that I've talked about countlessly. We haven't taken care of our roads. We haven't taken care of our infrastructure. We haven't taken care of our fleet. And number one, we haven't taken care of our people. If that's the road we want to go, then let me know. But right now, this is a, a conservative budget that's going to help us to continue to work on our internals and bear the, the needs for 2022 that may may need for additional changes. And in the meantime, we will be working on what we can improve to make things more efficient in the future. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Very good, then items 4.1 through 4.4 will lie over till our meeting on the 2nd of November. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight.